Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, today we're actually going to be preparing a compound known as potassium iodide. And, um, it has a wide variety of uses, and it's going to be pretty fun some of the uses I have planned for it. One of them is going to be the reaction with uh, lead nitrate, which produces um, the golden precipitant lead iodide, which is a very, very, very neat reaction because it looks almost like gold rain, and hence the reaction name is commonly referred to as golden rain. Um, the other reaction, of course, is going to be the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide with potassium iodide because potassium iodide is one of the best catalysts for this reaction, and I think it would be pretty neat because I've never actually done it with potassium iodide. So that's just something that would be fun to mess around with. So to begin, we're actually going to need to start by grabbing some potassium hydroxide and some elemental iodine. Now, we made both potassium hydroxide and elemental iodine in previous videos. Um, we extracted some iodine from seaweed, and um, we also got iodine from some um, iodine tincture, um, or iodine povidone, sorry. And then the potassium hydroxide was actually prepared through a slew of processes, starting out with um, um, either potassium nitrate, which was one source of potassium carbonate, um, and it was also prepared from potassium bitartrate, which is sold as cream of tartar. And um, in the end, we were left with some potassium hydroxide so that we could do some reactions because potassium hydroxide isn't exactly easy to find anywhere. And if you're going to need large quantities, I suggest ordering it online. But we'll, we'll only need like two or three grams, Jay. So I have plenty. So we're going to start by adding approximately 100 milliliters of water to a round bottom flask in a heating mantle, um, followed by the addition of about two and a half grams of potassium hydroxide. Then I'll meet you back. Okay, so when that's been added, the flask was swirled to dissolve it, and now I've turned on the heating mantle because we need to get the solution quite hot, probably around 70, 80, or 90 degrees Celsius for the reaction to occur. Um, now, I forgot, but I actually use most of our iodine in a different reaction. Um, so I have a bit of the homemade iodine, but not definitely not the 5 grams we're going to need. So, uh, luckily I had some extra iodine. This is 50 grams of iodine, which was purchased online. It's extremely cheap, $8 for 50 grams, way cheaper than extracting it from anything else. So go on eBay and get some iodine if you can't get it from seaweed or something. But um, if so, go look at my other videos and just make a whole bunch of iodine from seaweed or iodine povidone or something. Anyhow, we're going to need 5 grams of iodine, and this is in little pellets, so we're probably going to want to crush it up. So we'll weigh out 5 grams, crushed up, and then slowly begin to add it to the flask. Not all at once, just slowly, with a constant swirling of the flask to try to get it to dissolve. And it should dissolve, reacting with the potassium hydroxide, to form, hopefully, some potassium iodate, some potassium iodide, and water. And the iodate will be removed later, but, um, yeah. So hopefully that this will work. Um, and we should notice that the color of the iodine when we add it to the water will disappear um, as we swirl it around. So weigh out 5 grams, crush it up, and meet you back. Okay, so I weighed out 5 grams of our elemental iodine and just crushed it in this coffee gra or this um, magic bullet here so that it's in a nice fine powdery state now. And um, this should be perfect for the reaction. And the camera doesn't pick it up, but it kind of looks a bit purple. That's probably due to it slowly sublimating at room temperature. Um, and if you give a s gentle sniff of the um, inside of the container, you can definitely detect the chlorine-like odor of iodine. Anyhow, so we can now begin by slowly adding this, little bit by little bit, um, to the solution and slowly swirling, and continuing that until we've added all of our iodine. Uh, and then I'll meet you back. So I thought I would show you, so I added a bit of iodine, and you can see that in the bottom, it's lightly colored yellow, and if we swirl it around, um, it's actually starting to dissolve and slowly react with that potassium iodide. It's forming a nice little, or sorry, with potassium hydroxide, it's forming a nice um, yellowish color. I believe this is because of the iodate, because I believe it forms yellow solutions, but um, that should be fine. Anyhow, yeah, so we'll continue to heat this up and slowly add more iodine until we've uh, reacted all of it. Then I'll meet you back. So, actually, when everything had dissolved, it looked quite clear, which is excellent. Might be slightly tinted yellow, but that's okay. So, the solution is quite warm right now, um, pretty warm to the touch. But um, we're going to cool this down, and then the potassium iodate should hopefully precipitate out, as it's much less soluble in cold water compared to hot water. Um, so, we'll put this in the freezer, uh, let it cool down, and then we'll do a filtration. 
Um, and after filtering it, hopefully we'll be left with a nice, clear solution of uh, hopefully relatively pure potassium iodide, which should be good enough for most reactions. So um, go ahead, put this in the freezer, and cool it way down. Then I'll meet you back. Okay, so when I first tried to crystallize it out, uh, the potassium iodate, uh, by cooling it down, 100 milliliters, even at 0 degrees Celsius, the potassium iodate was still totally soluble, considering the amount we had. Um, because 4 grams of potassium iodate is soluble at 0 degrees Celsius in 100 milliliters of water. And we definitely didn't have 4 grams. So, to start, I boiled it down to what looks like about 25 milliliters, um, because when I boiled it down to that, I then filtered it off, and we were left with some nice potassium iodate in this um, filter paper here. And um, here's the filtrate. Um, now this here, um, 25 milliliters, means there's probably still about a gram of potassium iodate dissolved into it, because that's how much would have still stayed in solution. So what I'm actually going to do is boil this down to probably 5 or 10 milliliters, um, probably around 10, and um, at 10 milliliters, potassium iodide, which is still soluble at about 12.8 grams per 100, uh, uh, 12.8 grams per 10 milliliters, um, even at 0 degrees Celsius, so the potassium iodide will stay in the solution. However, the potassium iodate at 10 milliliters, will, we'd only be left with about 0 0.4 grams in solution, which would make it much more pure. So I'll boil this down to about 10 milliliters, then I'll meet you back. So, when it was boiled down to approximately 10 milliliters or so, it was once again transferred over to this uh, beaker here, and boiled down all the way, after we filtered it, of course. So I have the other uh, filtered here, and as you can see, there was a fair amount of um, our lead or uh, potassium iodate also. Uh, potassium iodate could be useful in a future video, not sure what I'll use it for, but we will keep that and um, transfer it to a separate container. Just be careful because potassium iodate is a very, very strong oxidizer, so it must be kept away from combustible materials. Anyhow, so I took the uh, beaker here with our potassium iodide, and um, when it was boiled down, it was crumbled up, and I'll just transfer it to this container and um, weigh out exactly how much we got. Then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after weighing that out, we actually have exactly, uh, or just, uh, just over 4 grams of uh, potassium iodide here. That's plenty for several different reactions. Um, it's a wonderful uh, catalyst, as I mentioned earlier, through the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. But um, I'll probably end up using a good portion of this actually to do the Golden Rain experiment with lead nitrate. And I did prepare some lead nitrate, um, and I plan on doing a video from it, simply by the dissolution of lead metal in nitric acid. Now, lead nitrate is quite toxic, so you have to be very careful, and it can be absorbed by the skin and kill you. So this reaction will be rather dangerous, but it should still be fun. If you're safe and everything. Anyhow, that's basically how to make um, um, some potassium iodide. Quite simple to do, you just need elemental iodine and, um, of course, some potassium hydroxide. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a future video. Wait, bye!